Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Tuesday, April 11th, 2017. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market fronts, everything is down a little and up a little. Just Shanghai and FTSE, they're the only ones that are up. Everything else is down, but only a little bit. Oil, up a little bit, but gold, up strongly. So what happened here? I'm going to read a little bit from CNBC, how they frame this. Stocks close lower as geopolitical worries linger. The Dow Jones Industrial Average slipped less than 10 points after dropping more than 100. The Nasdaq Composite declined as tech stocks declined for the eighth straight session. And here's what I wanted to get into. Remember, this is coming from the business part. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said Tuesday the U.S. will stand up against anyone who commits crimes against humanity. Hey, Rex. Here, Rex. Hey, Rex. Come here, Rex. Hey, Rex. Go after Bush. Go after Obama. Why don't you go after yourselves for bombing a sovereign nation without showing us any evidence other than... Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Because that's all it was. Quote, we, re we rededicate ourselves to holding to account any and all who commit crimes against the innocents anywhere in the world. Here, Rex. Here, Rex. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. Hey, Rex, go get him. Go get the murderers. Yeah, the Bushes, the Clintons, the Obamas, the Trumps, and the U's. Oh, yeah, you only killed, uh, what, about 15 people over there with those airstrikes you did over in there, Syria? Oh, yeah, nine of them were civilians? Hey, that's okay. You remember, don't pass gas, but you could drop bombs. Millions of people killed by Americans in immoral wars, no threat to any of us. And this guy shoots off his mouth like that. The Trump administration is also navigating through rising tensions with North Korea. Yep. Trump tweeted Tuesday today, quote, you ready for this? These are the morons in charge. Listen to this language. North Korea is looking for trouble. North Korea is looking for trouble? That's why America just sent a fleet there. Oh, no, North, Amer North Korea sent a fleet to uh, California. Yeah, that's where they are. No, they're in the Gulf of Mexico. They're looking for trouble. No, they're off Newport News over there where American uh, naval bases are. Then they'd be looking for trouble. United States is looking for trouble. Trump continues to tweet. And that's what we got, a Twitter tweeting. If China decides to help the world, that would be great. If not, we'll solve the problem without them. USA. That's right, USA. USA, USA. We, not you, Junior. Hey, fat boy, you can't run up a flight of stairs, I bet you. Yeah. Oh, you're going to send your boy Eric? Or your son-in-law, Kushner? No. So don't use the we. On to some other news. Gold jumped more than 1% on Tuesday as investors sought assets seen as, what have we been saying? The most ultimate safe haven asset because of rising tensions over North Korea and the Middle East. Listen to this. Global tensions escalated on Tuesday when Western countries were joined by Middle Eastern allies in a push to isolate Syrian President Assad following chemical attacks in the country last week. Nothing new about that. 
Middle East allies? Yeah, you love them beheaders and chiefs. Those Saudis, the Wahhabis, they're a bunch of moderate groups. Nah, maybe you like Qatar better, huh? United Arab Emirates, they're for you. Maybe Bahrain, all our wonderful allies. Hey, where are all you women protesting against the United States, supporting these countries where women's got no rights? Can't even drive a car over there in Saudi Arabia. What hypocrisy. What hypocrisy. Nothing new. Murderous allies of the Middle East. And you ready to go for oil prices? They went up. Turned positive on reports that Saudi Arabia has told OPEC officials it wants to continue OPEC cuts for an additional six months. You know what that is. That was bullshit. They keep talking bullshit to prop up the prices. We have global tensions going on. If this thing really escalates, you're going to see demand go way down. But prices may go way up, but demand will go down. Yesterday I talked about J.P. Morgan Chase that said... They're looking for the markets to go much higher. City, they're looking for a 5% uptick for global stocks by year end. Next big downturn is, quote, not imminent. We happen to disagree, so we're just putting that out there for record because you can't tell what's going to happen by the end of the year. And the way this thing is being so unsettled on the geopolitical scene, anything could happen, goes back to why we say gold is the ultimate safe haven asset. We've been speaking about it and writing about it, and that's why you want it in a time like this. Will the prices stay up? Depends on what happens. On to some other economic news. Toyota to invest $1.3 billion in its giant Kentucky plant Yep, so that's another positive for Trump. The announcement follows a push by President Trump for auto companies to expand in the United States. So those are the positives about Trump, and that's why we were more positive in the beginning when he was focusing on economics. And again, whether he liked or disliked his economic policies wasn't the issue. We said that some of them were positive for the people and some of them were positive for the markets, which generates growth. But now we're going into this military dimension that's not good for anyone. Wells Fargo tells two ex-officials to return $70 million in compensation. Officials. How come Wells Fargo doesn't tell Wells Fargo to return all the money that they cheated people out of according to those lawsuits? Huh? Well, the rest of the banksters. Pennies. Hey. Bop, 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 bop. What do we keep talking about? Reefa money madness. Not only a top trend of 2017, big story in the last issue, and a bigger one coming up yet with a lot more dimensions to it, and here's more proof. First pot-focused fund lets Americans legally invest in hot biz. That's the way CNBC called it. Hot biz, and we've been out in front of this biz long before most. The world's first marijuana-focused exchange-traded fund opened on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Quote, it's been difficult for Americans to legally invest in the world's booming marijuana business because the country is run by a bunch of morons. Oh, no, they didn't say that. They said uh, because uh, 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 the new online fund will let you do it at a click of a mouse. So, yeah, but it's run by a gang of morons, and that's why they're making this so difficult. So now you've got to go to Canada to invest in these stocks. The Horizon Medical Marijuana Life Science Exchange Traded Fund is comprised of 14 stocks. 
The fund uses the North American Medical Marijuana Index as a benchmark. North American medical marijuana market generated, you ready for this? $6.7 billion in revenue last year, 30% more than the previous year. And it's just going to keep growing. So then I go to the New York Times, look for some more business news, see what's going on. And here's what they got, folks. Look at the size of this picture. This is like a cartoon. This could be the National Enquirer. It's the low life times, man. They just keep going lower. What's this story? Held to account. The chief executive of Barclays, James Staley, faces an inquiry over his pursuit of a whistleblower, adding to the bank's problems. Woof, not on to me. And look how they make this guy look so bad. I mean, this is really cartooned up because it's becoming a cartoon paper. Don't believe me? Look at the front page. Look at the front page of this paper. Look how stupid this is. Oh, yeah. Big changes in England. It gets better. Let's open up those pages. Wow. Look at those photos, huh? Hey, you guys, too stupid to write anything? You got a bunch of morons and propagandists working for you and you can't put out anything of interest or facts. Hey, turn the page. How about some more photos? Here they are. Here they are. Yep. The New York Times. The toilet paper a record. And you know, you can't even use it for it. Well, maybe you can if you believe in them. And, of course, there's the big story, Syria. Yep. The propaganda coming out on this. Pip. Unstoppable. U.S. hints at tougher stance on Syria. The Trump administration held out the prospects of wider retaliation against Syria and signaled a new push to remove the country's divisive leader. Hey, Trump, guess you backtracked, huh? Guess you like Obama, huh? You're getting to be just like him. Yep, another liar. Lied his way into office. Because you go back to your tweets, Trump, and you go back to what Tillerson and our ambassador to the United States was saying just before this happened, and you said we weren't going to remove Assad. But I guess you changed your mind. White House, barrel bomb could lead to U.S. strike. The White House appeared to shift its position on what could draw U.S. military response into the Syrian conflict as warned that chemicals or barrel bomb attacks on civilians could draw fire from the Trump administration. Quote, if you gas a baby, if you put a barrel bomb into innocent people, I think you will see a response from this president, Press Secretary Sean Spicer told reporters. The barrel bomb attacks have won widespread criticism from U.S. lawmakers such as John McCain, who have urged more forceful response to the regime of Syrian President Assad. Ah, McCain. Yeah, he used carpet bombs and uh, bombs away over there in Vietnam. Yeah. That McCain? John Insane McCain? Yeah, love to drop those bombs in Vietnam, didn't you? McCain? Look at the hypocrisy here. The United States slaughtering people all over the world, and you got World War I gas, and they can't even afford real bombs. They got these barrel bombs. The hypocrisy. The propaganda and the hate that they're building up is so simplistic and it's working perfectly. Look at the fronts of these newspapers. The New York Post. Planes destroyed inside bunkers from more than 100 miles away. Smack on the nose. Ah, great, huh? Smack on the nose. Rockets red glare. Daily news. And they have Putin there. Get a little more red, you know, red communist. Canadian Prime Minister 
Chewed down? Yeah. Another little nothing. First of all, on Thursday, prior to the U.S. strike, Trudeau and his foreign minister, Christia Freeland, were calling for an international investigation and said it was too early to find out who was responsible for it. Yeah, just happened immediately. But 24 hours later, <clears throat> Trudeau appeared before television cameras and they declared that his government, quote, fully supports the U.S. missile strike because the Syrian regime, quote, cannot be permitted to continue chemical weapon attacks with impunity. Yeah, you got to bomb them like the United States and you guys do, huh? Dropping bombs is okay. Remember, don't pass gas, drop bombs. And if only a woman was in charge. Yeah, let's see what uh, Christia... Freeland, the foreign minister, had to say. She criticized Moscow, <clears throat> painting it as complicit in violations of international law. Not like those Israelis that are in violation of international law. No. And again, I'm only mentioning this women because I'm sick and tired of little people playing their gender card, race card, creed card, or any other card. Slime and good comes in both, so let's make it clear. Quote, Russia needs to pressure Assad to do the right thing. Do the right thing? What kind of stupid talk is that? Oh, that's political stupid talk. What's the right thing, Miss Freeland? Why don't you mind your own damn business and stay the hell out of there because you've killed already you people of the coalition of the killing over 500,000 Syrian citizens. You've displaced half the country of 22 million. With a war started for no reason other than your sick minds in controlling the Middle East. Russia needs to step up and act. What is very important is that the international community cannot be paralyzed by that Russian veto. And we won't. But you let Israel get away with breaking international law. The United States and all you people that invaded Iraq and other countries in violation of international law. You're all a bunch of hypocrites. Hey, but that's who's running the world. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.